We talked in 7.4 about what conditional probability was. Conditional probability was this idea that probability of A given that B has already happened. Not just looking at what's the chance of A, okay? What's the chance of something happening given that something else has happened? What's the chance of the Canucks winning the Stanley Cup? Well, now, given that, given that they were eliminated already, what's the chance? Zero. Zero, right? Without this, before, like, we can't go back and pretend we don't know that, but if we went back to before we knew that, this wouldn't be zero, right? Without that condition there, the probability is something different. That's what conditional, that's what that condition is on the end there, given that that's happened. On your formula sheet, you know that uh, one that I give you on tests, which I will find here for you as quick as I can, except I can't remember where I found it. Here's this, here's this formula sheet. The reason I point this out to you now is because it does have this. This is actually probably, um, there used to be a unit called statistics. That's why this might be on the one that I gave you. I can't even remember. I don't think yours has that one anymore, but it's probability. It might still say probability and statistics. These were the three for combinatorics that you used. There are some of the probability formulas that we use here. This is the one that deals with the complement. I would actually write on the formula. I would write on the one you have and then use a new one in the test. When, when, anytime we do tests. Because it's better if you're studying to, to look at these and um, know what these are instantly. It's totally up to you. I have tons of them you can use during tests. But this was the permutations formula while we're at it here. This one was the uh, binomial expansion formula. This one, this one is the complement formula. The one that deals with not, right? The probability of not A. Right? Probability of A not happening is 100% minus the probability that A is going to happen. Or alternately, these two have to add up to 100%. That's what that formula is. This one is the, as is self-evident here, the A or B formula, right? Or, and then this one is the, of course, the AND formula, multiplying. And it is rearranged. This is sort of rearranged right here. This, this is written as a, I, I mean, we can call this the conditional formula if you want. But it's basically just this formula rearranged. It's just that formula that's been turned around, right? We looked at that last time that you could change that formula around. If you have probability of C, uh, oops, sorry. If you have probability of C and D happening, that's equal to probability of C times what? Times probability of D given that C has happened, right? Chance of C happening times chance of D after you know that's already happened. This one is just a rearranged version of that. This one is just taking and, and wanting to isolate that. So taking this and moving it on the other side and dividing, right? If you put that down there and divide, you get a formula for that. That's what this formula is. That's a conditional probability formula. We're going to use that today, okay? Later on, we're going to look at this. This is in 7.7. 7. We're going to get to that. It's related to binomial stuff. All right, go back to this. Come on, not that hard. There we go. Okay, so we're going to do problems involving this. What, uh, what you need to do here is uh, look at this first situation, or we're going to look at this first situation. There are two different things here, two different pots that are, have bills in them, nice square dollar bills or whatever. I will read this to you, because sometimes I know you don't read the words, you just look at the picture. I'm guilty of that, as I'm, I'm as guilty of that as the next person. In math, it hurts, though, because there's usually inf information here that's important. A pot is randomly selected, 
and then a bill is randomly chosen from that pot. There's no other way. I could have put here, you spin a spinner to figure out which pot you choose, or you flip a coin, or you roll a dice, or you do something, and maybe the probability would have been different. But if it says a pot is randomly selected, what are the chances of each one of these happening? Yeah, one, one in two chance, 50% chance. I would say for conditional probability problems, it's helpful to make a tree diagram. We can we could try and make a table. You know how we like counted outcomes before? Remember we counted outcomes? How many different outcomes are here? Because it's not hard to count, right? How many different bills could you end up with? I know you're thinking this is harder than it is. You're playing this game. Here's you. Well, how many different things could you end up with in your hand? Well, you could end up with this one, right? Or this one, 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 or this one. You might have, you might think then that the probability is, well, if it says now, this is what we're aiming at here. What's the chance a $10 bill is chosen? What's the, t can you say it's, well, there's seven bills and three of them are $10 bills? Can you do that? The only way you can do this by counting outcomes is if you know that all of the outcomes are equally likely. Are all seven of those bills equally likely? They are equally likely, you think? If we if we did this, we could. Like if, if this one wasn't here, if there was the same number in each pot, because 50% of the time I'm picking that, 50% of the time I'm picking that. And then one out of three times I'm picking each of those. If that one wasn't there, then it would work, the shortcut like that. But you can't do it this way because if you're if you're taking each one equally, which one of these $10 bills is going to come up most often? The one in – this one is going to come up more often, this one? Oh, the two of them together, you mean. You're going to get a $10 bill more often than that. I mean, which of those three individual ones? This one, right? Because – 50% of the time you're picking this, 50% of the time you're picking this, right? If you look at a tree diagram, it'll help you see what the chances are. They're not equally likely. You cannot do it the shortcut. Not equally likely. So you can't just do it by counting outcomes like that, okay? By simple counting. That's important to realize because that's that's a pretty common wrong answer is just adding, lumping them all together. You can't just lump them all together, right? What if we uh, what if we played a game where I pick someone randomly in here to win? Well, okay, first of all, I pick this room or the next room, 50-50. I roll, I flip a coin, heads I pick this room, tails I pick that room. And then I pick somebody randomly out of the room to win a prize. Do you have a better chance or do people in the other room have a better chance? What? Some people said you do and some people said the other people do? Doesn't it depend? What if Mr. What if the next door neighbor, there was one person in the room? What if there's only one person in that room? So if I ran, if I flip the coin and it's that room, who wins? Like that person wins every one of the times, right? Like if... If all we had over here was a single $10 bill, this, this one's going to come up how, how often? If we're, if we're randomly picking a pot 50% of the time, 50% of the time this is going to come up. But this is only going to come up less than that, right? Well, it's going to come up 33% of 50%, right? Like if you want the numbers to be nicer, then just pretend this one wasn't here. This is only going to come up how often then? 25, right? It's going to come up less often. Unless they're equally likely. Those are not equally likely. You can't just lump them together. You cannot just lump them together the way it is. All right. So once we're okay with that, we're going to analyze the situation. Can you put down here first? I'm going to call these A and B because I think it's easier if we don't have numbers involved here. It's easier if we have letters to really distinguish it from the... I know there's no ones and two dollar bills in there, but... Here you have a 1, or I'm calling it an A, or a B. I'm going to have to stop this and start again. Once you're in A, you could get a 0, 
dollar bill, <laughs> nice dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, or what's the other one? A twenty. Or in pot B, you could get a zero dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, or a twenty dollar bill. I want you to write down the probabilities next to each of those letters of 